Hey everyone, I'm going to show you one of my games that I recently played where I reached this position against my opponent. Things were looking bad, he managed to get his rook to the second rank and was attacking all of my paces. Let's see how I managed to fight my way out of this position in this particular classical game analysis. I hope you can join me. Okay, so let's have a look how this game started. So the game started with e4, I was playing as white, just so you also know that the time controls for this one were 70 minutes plus 10 seconds. Um, this was a sort of local luck match. We were playing against um, what we thought were kind of the bottom team in our division. Uh, but this particular player, I thought he seemed m played much better than his rating. I think it was only like maybe again 1500. But when I asked him what his rating was, he said, oh, I've got a provisional rating. I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, I've only played 10 games. I had a look at his game database online to see what games he had played. He had played 10 matches and he'd won all 10 of those matches. <laughs> and he had a provisional rating of just under 2,000. So I think he was actually much stronger than he uh, let off to be. But let's see how I managed to play this game. So E4, E6, D4, D5. And E5 was played again. We're going for our advance French defence. I'm gaining space. But I do allow black to now have a move here to attack my center, which he does with c5. That's c3 played, knight to c6, knight to f3. And now knight to h6 was played. And um, I've not actually met this variation before because I just thought it was quite bad. Quite simply, I was thinking to myself, well, now surely I could just double up his pawn structure, which is exactly what I did. I took here. Now, I will show you just very briefly, if let's say he plays queen here, and I don't know, let's say now I play something like this. And now if he plays knight to h6, it would not be in his best interest to take this, uh, this knight. What, well, I mean, if I took this knight, because this would just be awful as now with this knight, bishop, sorry, uh, not defending the square, he can then take here on b2 and I've just got a dreadful position. Uh, I'm going to be losing a lot of material. I'm going to capture back this bishop momentarily. So, um, yeah, I've seen this variation before, but what I haven't seen before is knight to h6 first. Because now I can just take his knight, right? And I'm not have to worry about this uh this queen taking here. So I fought for a bit of a bit a few moments here. And I kind of thought to myself, well, I don't know if this looks right, because if I capture here and this, okay, he's got these double pawns, but I've just given him this this G file to now attack down. So actually, I didn't think it was all that good. And, you know, it's interesting when I looked at the, the database, uh, Bishop takes on h6 has been played. It's been played 25,000 times, uh, but it doesn't actually score particularly well. Black, in fact, wins 52% of the games. I whack on the engine, though, and it then says, mm, no, you should take. So, I don't know. The jury is out on this particular line. I I'll be honest with you. If I was to play this game again, I probably wouldn't have taken the knight. But in any case, I took here. Now G takes, and well, again, I had a bit of a think here, and well, I didn't, don't, I don't think I chose the best move uh, that I possibly could have played here in this position. I now played the move G three. Um, I kind of thought to myself, well, if he gets his rook here, at least I could put my bishop and then castle. That was kind of my thought process. The downside is obviously now he's got his pawn lever now to also then break open my uh, king side potentially. And actually, is my bishop on g2 really doing a whole lot? You can see the center is all very close at the minute. It doesn't look like it's going to suddenly erupt open. So I'm not entirely sure this g3 idea was the best. Uh, according to the um, the uh, database, the most played move here is bishop to d3, which I didn't really like the look of. Uh, well, no, I think I don't know actually why I would, would say that. I think it was fine. I just think like, well, I can't really castle because I just run into this. If I whack on the engine, the best move it says here is actually bishop to b5, which is interesting. I guess the idea. I mean, if I let's say just do this for example, I mean now uh, I would now play queen to e2, and this is quite a clever little move order. I don't now need to move this bishop yet. If he now does a6, okay, takes takes. And I've doubled up another set of pawns. If he takes with the queen here, again, this wouldn't be any real any real good because now he no longer has this pressure here. So we take with the pawn, let's say. And now I can actually castle. And what's really clever about this move order is now this queen is still defending this b2 pawn. So, yeah, this would have been something that I could have maybe considered. Okay, so instead g3 was played. He now put his queen onto b6, hitting here. And now I play queen to d2. 
Again, it's not a perfect position for me. I'm having to defend this defend this pawn with a queen, which is perhaps not the best piece for defending. But I thought to myself, okay, well, if I can find a way to shore up the defense here, at least I can maybe go after this pawn on h6 later at some point. Okay, bishop came to d7, uh, bishop to g2, then there was a capture in the center. Bishop came to b4. Obviously, this looks really bad, but thankfully I've got... The, uh, the knights to jump in the way. If I didn't, then, well, <laughs> it would be resignable. So I then uh, I then played this. And Castle's Long, which I thought was a very unusual decision from my opponent, because essentially he is now castled onto an open file where I could potentially get my pieces down. Well, OK, I now castle. I thought, great, I can now get some stuff and start attacking. The king came to b8, getting out of the way. And now I start the process of expanding and attacking on the queen side. I think I've got a nice speedy attack versus him. who hasn't really got anything going on on the king side. The whack on the engine. Well, you can definitely see I'm doing very well here. Uh, this is already get, becoming a bit of a sizable advantage in this particular line. So I felt comfortable at this point that I was going to do well. Okay, bishop came to e7. b4 is played. f6 now. And uh, well, this is where things kind of got a little bit, a little bit chaotic because he's about to break in the center, and uh, well, I haven't really got any great ways of maybe dealing with, with this. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. So here at this point, I now played something quite complicated. Put my knight onto a4, hitting the queen, and I guess that tries to deflect it away from the pressure on this pawn. Uh, but now he plays queen to uh, b4, which I d b5, which I didn't really expect. I thought maybe he'll come back with his queen here. And I guess if I'm trying to remember my thought process here, I was thinking maybe, OK, I can then, I don't know, um, maybe capture here or just jump the knight in here. I, can't, I really can't remember what I thought, what I was thinking here. Uh, ah, OK, that was right. That was what I was thinking. Right. So F to C1. I know I, know I whacked on the engine, but that kind of job my memory is to what I was thinking. So I was going to pin this knight. So then he can't really capture here anymore, which is good, uh, because obviously this will drop uh, to this. So, uh, so I was going to play this and I thought this looked pretty fine. What I didn't expect was him to actually move forward with the queen. I thought, oh, that didn't look really right, because surely it looks as though he's trapping his queen a little bit. Well, I jump my knight into c5 anyway, and then things again start to explode in the center. This comes off, I take off his bishop, I then take here, and there's lots of trades that go on. And I guess what I missed in my calculation was this bishop to g5 move. I thought it looked really fine, I thought that you know, this bishop wasn't going to be particularly active. But then after this move, well, I now um, was kind of worrying a little bit, because this bishop becomes active. I perhaps shouldn't have played the move f4 here. Again, if I whack on the engine, oh, it does say it's fine actually here. So f4, I was thinking about maybe just moving the queen somewhere. But again, you know, it's very hard with this open file to do these sort of things. So that happened. And in this position, well, I felt like I needed to just swap off the queens now. So I put my queen here. And again, my thought process was this, at least after the exchange, I'm going to get my rook off the bank rank to potentially uh, double up on this uh, C file. Now there's a big downside to my position and that's quite simply um, he has this passed pawn on d4 and I don't have a passed pawn. I have to create one with something like f5 followed by e6. So uh, yeah it was a little bit tricky now for me because after bishop to d8 oh dear I've essentially allowed him to activate his bishop for free and he gets this pin. I'm not sure what else I really could have played here. King to f2, it says, was better. In actual fact, I think it says that bishop, the rook there was a bit of an inaccuracy. But again, I mean, I don't like the look of what if he just plays something like this. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he has to do the bishop first. So let's do that first. And um, yeah, I wonder. Bishop to bishop to h3, it quite likes. That's interesting. To just hit, put a bit of pressure on the pawn. If he just moves here, okay, it just all collapses in on itself. So that doesn't work. And then if, let's say, he defends it, let's do it this way, uh, then, well, surely I can just take over this file. So, okay, this would have been fine for me if had I found it. Um, but, you know, it's not super clear for me. You know, I am ahead uh, positionally because uh, I've got some better space here. And 
eventually I'm going to pick up these pawns. But black does still have some drawing chances. We've got these opposite colour bishops. So if these rooks suddenly were to swap off, I would just have a much worse, worse position. OK, so going back to the game. So this happened now and the bishop came here. I put my rook onto d2. I didn't like the look of after this, this idea with the, with the, uh, with the pawn. I just felt that as though this would put me under some immediate pressure and he could even start popping his bishop around to then really cause me some problems. So I put my, my rook onto uh, d2 to at least just keep it at bay. There's a check. The other rook comes into play and now I whack my bishop onto there. So I'll have this little safety attack to then hit this pawn. Well, the rook comes here and now I swing forward, I thrust forward with my counter attack. Now notice if he now captures this pawn, well I get this pawn and I'm defending and this pawn is going to fall very soon. However, what I missed in my calculation after this was this very powerful rook to c2 and I started to panic quite a lot. I felt as though my position was not going the way that I wanted it to go. The reason why I was really worried about this move is now he's threatening just to come to this square. And what's really annoying for my bishop is that if, let's say, okay, for example, let's just say I put my, my rook here, for example. Oh, which is what I ended up doing, sorry. So what I was really worried about is after this, I couldn't take this pawn on f5 because it ran into this very nasty fork here on uh, f2. Notice that the rook and the bishop are working really well together to attack my position. So I suddenly was like, oh my goodness, I can't do that. I did play my rook to uh, d1. Uh, there was other problems as well. I was really worried about after the rook coming here, coming maybe the h1, just doing all kinds of problems for me. But I found after this move a really cunning response. And I didn't first see it at first. But when I did see it, I felt like, oh, OK, I think my position is absolutely fine. So the rook taking here, I think, is actually a mistake because I can now play the move bishop to g2. This is really good as it not only defends this threat here of the rook coming down here, but also now it makes this rook completely offside. It's going to have to play moves such as h5 followed by g5 to get back into the position to start thinking about attacking there. So I kind of win quite a few tempies as a result of this. And uh, well, in rook and pawn endings, OK, there's some bishops on the board as well. In rook and pawn endings, it's all about activity. So if you have rooks like this that are having to spend a bit of moves just to get back into the position, then um, this is really, really good. As I, say, I think, did I say tempo? I mean kind of activity, so but tempo is kind of important. Anyway, it doesn't matter. OK, so here, rook 2, h5 was now played. I put my rook onto d7. I was looking to trade off a pair of rooks, and I felt like this was really good, because if he took, then I come in here, I'm still hitting this pawn, and I might pick up another pawn over here, and I thought my position was looking fine. So in this position, he now captures this pawn, and I thought after this, I thought, OK, great, I'm winning. This should be absolutely fine. I'm threatening mates. I don't know how the heck he is going to stop this mating threat. So notice I'm just threatening to come here, followed by this mating two. Easy peasy. And I was like, OK, great. I've got 15 minutes left on the ball. Go wander around a little bit. Um, you know, look at some of the games. Little did I know he found this really great move. So rook to e4, a brilliant move, OK? I think this really keeps him in the game, although I believe it's still losing. So if I whack it on again, yeah, this is totally losing for black, but at least it keeps him in the game and keeps things interesting. So now after this, and pawn takes, well, he's now got a pass pawn that I've now got to deal with. And my time is starting to run out a little bit. You know, I need to try and find some ways to defeat black, but do it in a way that I don't end up running out of time in the process. OK, so now my king comes to g2. I've got to play this move as he was threatening to come to h8 to win my rook. And now he gets behind this pawn. Things are starting to look a little bit scary. But I decided, OK, I'm going to capture this rook and at least threaten checkmates in uh, one move or two, two moves. So here I felt his best move in this position was actually just to play rook to e8. Instead in the game, he now plays uh, this move, which is trying, well, at least attempting to uh, evacuate his rook down here. But after I'd played this check, 
and then I played this rook to the c, c, uh, c8. I thought, okay, this looks absolutely fine. It looks as though I'm going to checkmate him. But again, he manages to find ways out. He puts his bishop onto e3, creating once again an escape square for his king to then maybe evacuate out. I now play my rook onto e8. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to swap off a pair of rooks and then pick up this bishop on e4. Now, again, in this position, I thought maybe the best move for him was to try and keep the rooks on. And, uh, okay, maybe drop a pawn here, but at least he's got the rook to keep active. But I felt like after he now exchanged rooks, this was then totally losing now for black. I don't think he's going to find a way to get back into this position. He put his bishop on to c1 for the time being. I now just, uh, I think I just moved my, what did I do here now? I think I just moved this pawn forward. And uh, after something like this, then I was going to, I was basically just going to do this. So instead, uh, he puts his, so after this, I think he now pushes his pawn forward. And then I was able to slowly round up. There were some interesting lines with maybe sacking the rook, but I didn't think like I needed to <laughs> go that crazy. Uh, the game went on for a few more moves. Unfortunately, at this point, I started to run quite low on time, so I wasn't able to record all of the moves here. But not too long after uh, these moves, my opponent ended up resigning. You can maybe see why he decided to resign in the end, because I'm going to end up uh, just getting a very nice position, maybe picking up this pawn once I get the king in front of this pawn, and then start pushing this pawn down the board. Once again, if I whack on the engine, okay, it doesn't say I'm totally winning, but it's still plus, well, now it's, now it's going up to 4.5. Yeah, I mean, this is a very, very good position for me. So there we go. A very interesting game. As I say, if I look at the kind of highlight reel, yeah, there was a quite an interesting opening that started off. If I zip through, maybe this bishop takes on h6 was perhaps not the move I should have played here. But in any case, we then had this quite interesting position. I felt as though um, I felt in control, but then I felt like after this, this kind of threw me a bit. And I just got into some of the needless complications of this position. And uh, well, after this, I mean, OK, it's still winning, but I didn't feel as comfortable after this move. So, yeah, interesting kind of position here. Got very lucky. I think f5 was actually a mistake in the actual game. If I whack on, I'm just looking at the engine now. It's saying that f5 was a mistake because it just equalizes the position. And uh, well, I think I got very lucky to find this bishop g2 move that kept me in the game and actually totally swung the, the balance of power. Again, it's quite interesting that at this point, it's then saying it is equal. But if I whack on the, if I have a look at the different moves, if I just, let's see, uh, oops, not, not go deeper. I don't want to do that. Oh, I can't find it. But then in any case, uh, I think it was a kind of like a half to fine move was bishop to g g2. If I didn't play this, I would have lost the game immediately. So yeah, it was good that I found that. And then after a few more moves, um, it does say that that was a mistake. And I wonder what was actually better. Ooh, f4. Oh, wow, this is a variation we didn't look at. How interesting. And what's wrong with me just capturing here? Oh, wow, that's a cool pawn sacrifice. So he had to find that to stay in the game because now his rook can get back into play. Wow, what a cool little pawn sacrifice that was. Okay, interesting little line. But in any case, if I keep going through, da -da -da -da, and you can now see here, okay, I was able to get a comfortable lead after the, one of the rooks came off in the end. So there we go. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoy what you see, make sure you check out some of my other classical games uh, that I've got on the channel. Uh, I do have one more game that I need to upload uh, that should come on the channel very soon. But in any case, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.